Dear students, in this video, we shall learn about the Bessel equation, which is one of the significant topic under linear equations with regular singular points. Now here, we have to find all the solutions of the Bessel equation of order, order alpha, where alpha is a constant and the real part of alpha is greater than or equal to zero. In particular, now we are going to deal with uh, find the solution when alpha is equal to 0. So the Bessel equation of order alpha is given by x squared y double dash plus x y dash plus x squared minus alpha squared y is equal to 0 where alpha is a constant and real part of alpha is greater than or equal to 0. So this is the Bessel equation of order alpha. Now we have to compare this equation with the Euler's equation which we have learnt in our previous video. So let us see that now. So the Euler's equation is given by x squared y double dash plus x a of x y dash plus b of x y equal to 0. So now comparing these two equations we can say that the value of a of x is equal to 1 and the value of b of x is equal to x squared minus alpha squared. So this is what we obtain. Now we can see that A and B are analytic at x equal to 0. So if these two are analytic at x equal to 0, we can say that the Bessel equation has the origin as regular singular point. The concept of regular singular point I have discussed in my previous lecture. So by uh, so by noticing that a of x and b of x to be analytic because here we can see that there is no x in the denominator and here the x is in the numerator. So definitely when we apply the limits that is when we apply x tends to 0 in these two we can see that um, the, the value will be a finite value from which we can say that a of x and b of x is analytic at x equal to 0. So that x equal to 0 will become a regular singular point and so therefore the Bessel equation has the origin because we are taking x as 0 if the origin becomes uh, the origin it will be a regular singular point. So that may appear in uh, one mark questions also so make a note of it. So that I have written here. Now in order to find the solutions of this given equation First of all, we need to write the initial polynomial q of x for this given equation. So let us write that now. So the initial polynomial q of r is given by q of r equal to r multiplied with r minus 1 plus a of x r plus b of x. Now at the origin that is at x equal to 0, so this q of r will be r multiplied with r minus 1 plus a of 0 r plus b of 0. So now what is a of 0? a of 0 is anyhow going to be 1 only. Now b of 0 will be, so when we substitute x as 0, so this term vanishes and we have it as negative alpha squared. So let us write that now. So q of r will be equal to r multiplied with r minus 1 plus r minus alpha square. So now on simplifying this what do we get this will be equal to r square minus r plus r minus alpha square. So we will be having this q of r to be equal to r square minus alpha square and to find the roots of this equation we have to equate it to 0. So from this we can write this as r plus alpha multiplied with r minus alpha is equal to 0 and so the value of r will be equal to alpha and uh, negative alpha. So, so we can take it as r1 equal to alpha and r2 is equal to negative alpha. So these are the roots of this given initial polynomial. So now we are going to find the solutions of the Bessel equation when alpha is equal to 0. So when alpha equal to 0, r1 and r2 both become 0 and they become equal roots. So we can have it as r1 equal to r2 which can be taken as some r and that is equal to 0. 
so now uh, when this is zero it becomes equal roots and so by a theorem which we have which we uh, by a theorem we know that so by a theorem here we have so when the roots are equal so if r1 is equal to r2 for this equation there are two linearly independent solutions phi1 comma phi2 in such a way that x lies between zero and real part i mean um uh, so r r not where this r not is greater than uh, zero so the solution will be of the form phi1 of x equal to x power r1 uh, so uh, irrespective of the modulus we'll have it as only positive value because uh, we are taking x is greater than zero so anyway we will consider it x power r1 sigma 1 of x and x power here phi2 will be x power r1 plus 1 sigma 2 of x plus log x phi 1 of x where the sigma 1 and sigma 2 have power series expansions which are convergent for modulus of x lesser than r naught and sigma 1 of 0 is not equal to 0 so now we are going to use um, make use of this concept here so since both the roots are equal to 0 there are two solutions phi 1 comma phi 2 of the form phi 1 of x equal to sigma 1 of x and phi 2 of x is equal to x sigma 2 of x plus log x phi 1 of x let us mark this as equation 1 where the sigma 1 and sigma 2 has the power series expansions which converge for all finite x now in order to find this phi 1 of x and phi 2 of x first of all we need to find sigma 1 of x so that we will be able to evaluate phi 1 of x and also sigma 2 of x so that after substituting here uh, we will be getting phi 2 of x so now we shall compute sigma 1 of x and sigma 2 of x now the Bessel equation turns out to be because as we have taken alpha to be equal to 0 the Bessel equation L of y will be equal to x squared y double dash plus x y dash plus x squared and alpha is 0 so x squared minus alpha squared so because alpha is 0 it becomes x squared y so this is the Bessel equation now we have to find sigma 1 and sigma 2 so now we already know that sigma 1 and sigma 2 have the power series expansions so we can take sigma 1 of x to be equal to so sigma 1 of x will be equal to so how the power series expansion will be so from analysis we know that the power series expansion is given by summation k equal to 0 to infinity c k x power k where the c naught is not equal to 0 okay so now this gives us the power series expansion and now we know that phi 1 of x is a solution of this equation now phi 1 of x is equal to sigma 1 of x so we can write this as l of uh, sigma 1 of x okay so l of sigma 1 of x and that will be equal to x squared sigma 1 double dash of x plus x sigma 1 dash of x plus x squared sigma 1 of x now using sigma 1 of x which has this expansion we will find sigma 1 dash of x and sigma 1 double dash of x and substitute in this equation so the, and this will be equal to 0 because we know that sigma 1 of x is a solution of l of y so we will first find sigma 1 dash of x now from this when we differentiate this we get sigma 1 dash of x so we know that when we differentiate now for example the first term here is c naught uh, x bar 0 x bar 0 is 1 so first term is obtained by substituting k equal to 0 so c naught will be the first term and when that is differentiated constant will become 0 and so this summation will turn out to be k equal to 1 to infinity because the first term becomes a 0 for k equal to 0 it becomes uh, 0 uh, it becomes 1 to infinity or else, or else simply you remember that whenever we differentiate the summation uh, uh, a value which has a summation the value that varies from 0 to infinity will reduce to uh, reduce by one term so it will become k equal to 1 to infinity and ck 
and the differentiation of x bar k is k multi uh, multiplied with x to the power k minus 1 so this is the uh, this is sigma 1 dash of x now from this we shall find sigma uh, 1 double dash of x so that will be equal to now again we have to differentiate this so summation again it reduces by a value which becomes k equal to 2 to infinity so when we differentiated summation k equal to 0 to infinity we had summation k equal to 1 to infinity and on another difference again differentiating it summation k equal to 2 to infinity ck and then k multiplied with k minus 1 x to the power k minus 2 so this is sigma 1 double dash of x now in this equation we have to substitute for which we need x squared sigma 1 double dash of x so we will first write it simply here so that will be so x squared sigma 1 double dash of x so that will be equal to we have to multiply this term with x square and so when we multiply x bar k minus 2 with x square, the power adds up. So k minus 2 plus 2. So minus 2 plus 2 gets cancelled and it turns out to be summation k equal to 2 to infinity c k k multiplied with k minus 1 x to the power k. So this is what we obtain. So let us mark this as equation 2 because already we have marked an equation 1. Let us mark this as equation 2. And then what we have to evaluate is we need the second term x sigma 1 dash of x. So now we will write here x sigma 1 dash of x. So that will be equal to so with this term we have to multiply x. So when we multiply x with x power k minus 1 the powers adds up so k minus 1 plus 1 and so it turns out to be x power k and so we have here summation k equal to now so uh, here what you will have it is 1 to infinity c k k k x to the power k now we want the summation here we have summation k equal to 2 to infinity so we want to make this also k equal to 2 to infinity for which we can substitute k equal to 1 so when we substitute k equal to 1 this will be c1 okay multiplied with 1 x power 1 so it will be c1 x plus now we will write the rest of the terms k equal to 2 to infinity so 2 to infinity c k k x power k so uh, we have uh, in order to have summation k equal to 2 to infinity in this term also we are rewriting it like this and so we shall mark this as equation 3 and now the last thing that we have to evaluate to substitute here in this equation is x squared sigma 1 of x so let us evaluate this separately so here we have x square sigma 1 of x so that will be equal to now what is sigma 1 of x this one summation k equal to 0 to infinity c k x bar k so with this we have to multiply x square so what we will be obtaining is summation k equal to 0 to infinity c k now x bar k multiplied with x square turns out to be x power k plus 2 so this is what we obtain here so we have here x bar k plus 2 now in this term what we will we are going to do is we are going to replace so replace k by k minus 2 so when we replace k by k minus 2 what do we get so wherever we have k so this will be equal to summation k it will become k minus 2 so it will be k minus 2 equal to 0 to infinity c k minus 2 x to the power k will become k minus 2 plus 2 so now this will be again equal to so this will be that is x squared sigma 1 of x will be equal to summation now k minus 2 equal to 0 so taking this 2 to the other side we will be having k equal to 2 to infinity so now you will know why we are replacing k by k minus 2 in order to make the summation vary from 2 to infinity we have made this replacement 
So this will be C K minus two x to the power. Now this two a minus two and plus two will get cancelled and we will have x bar k. And let us mark this as equation four. Now what we will do? We will substitute four, three and two in this equation in L of sigma one. And let us see what we obtain. So in this we are going to substitute all the three quantities that we have evaluated separately. So now in this equation we have to substitute. X squared sigma one double dash of x, so which will be summation k equal to two to infinity k multiplied with k minus one c k x bar k. Then we have to substitute x sigma one of sigma one dash of x, and so that is this. So plus this term c one x plus summation k equal to two to infinity k c k x bar k plus x squared sigma one of x equal to zero. So plus summation k equal to two to infinity c k minus two x bar k equal to zero. Now in in these three terms we can see that that is this this and this term. What all we can take in common? Summation k equal to two to infinity can be taken in common, and then x bar k can be can be taken in common in all the three terms. So and also in particular within that, the in these two terms we can take c k and uh, c k as common. So doing uh, all that simplification, what we obtain here is this. So we have written c one of x plus summation k equal to two to infinity. We have taken in common, and also x bar k we have taken in common as a total. And then uh, in these two terms, k into k minus one plus k we have within the bracket, and c k is taken common plus c k minus two equal to zero. So this is what we obtain. Now in this term, multiplying this, that is the Uh, this will become k into k is k squared minus k plus k. So this minus k plus k gets cancelled, and we have k squared c k. And so this is what we obtain after simplifying this term. So now in this, comparing the coefficients of the variables on both the sides, we see that the coefficient of x here is c one, and here since we don't have the term, the coefficient of x can be taken as zero. And so we obtain the value of c one to be equal to zero, and then comparing the coefficient of x bar k on both the sides, here the coefficient of x bar k is zero, and on the left we have k squared c k plus c k minus two is equal to zero. From this we can obtain the value of c k, and so what will be c k equal to? So actually, from this k squared c k will be equal to taking this uh, c k minus two to the other side, we get negative c k minus two, and the, now further dividing this by k squared, we get c k to be equal to negative c k minus two divided by k squared. k square where the value of k varies from 2 to infinity so 2 3 etc up to infinity so now we have obtained ck as this value and we are going to take so taking the value of c not to be equal to 1 so this is what we are going to take so now we shall find uh, what is c2 So we have c not as one, c one as zero, and uh, c k as this. So from this, c two will be equal to. So substituting k equal to two. So k equal to two. If you put c two will be equal to negative c two minus two is zero. So negative c not divided by two square. And what is c not? C not we have taken as one. So this will be equal to negative one by two square. So the value of c two will be equal to negative one by two square. And we can see that the value of c three will be negative c three minus two uh, is. Um, is, is uh, we will have c one. But what is c one? C one is zero. So because c one is zero, c three will also be equal to zero. Okay. Now next we will find C four. So what will be C four? So from this C four will be equal to. So I'll just write here. Okay. So while putting k equal to four, C four will be equal to negative C four minus two, which will be C two divided by four square. 
so that is equal to now already what is c2 c2 is negative 1 by 2 squared so negative into negative becomes positive and then um, so we can write it as negative 1 the whole square and then because we have two negative signs to ju just to ge generalize it I am writing it in this form so negative 1 the whole square and what is the value of c2 c2 is uh, um, well, it is 1 by 2 square right so we can write it as 1 by 2 squared multiplied by 4 squared so therefore the value of c4 is equal to negative 1 the whole squared divided by 2 squared and then 4 squared so let, let us just mark this similarly next what will be c5 c5 will be equal to negative c3 by k squared so c3 is 0 so therefore c5 will be 0 in a similar way uh, we will evaluate one more term which is c6 and c6 will be equal to negative c4 divided by 6 squared now what is c4 here we have this term so, uh, including this negative sign, we get negative 1 power 3 divided by 2 squared, 4 squared, 6 squared. So, therefore, the value of C6 is equal to negative 1 power 3 divided by 2 squared, 4 squared, 6 squared. And now, we shall generalize all this. Um, if we see, C1 is equal to 0. So, that we have, we already have C1 is 0 c3 is 0 c5 is 0 so we observe that all the terms which has the odd uh, uh, like uh, c1 c3 c5 which has odd suffix become 0 so we can generally say that uh, all the terms with suffix or uh, with odd numbers become 0 and so we can write this as so, in general, C1 equal to 0 implies C3, C5, C7 all are equal to 0. So, now we have to generalize the uh, terms with even suffixes. That is, here we observe that C2 is equal to negative 1 by 2 squared, which we can write as negative 1 power 1 divided by 2 squared. Then, C4 is negative 1 power uh, 2 divided by 2 squared, 4 squared. Then C6 is negative 1 power 3, 2 squared, 4 squared, 6 squared. So seeing this, we can generalize and write the even terms as C2M. So because uh, this is 2, 4, 6, if we write 2M and as we give values for M to be 1, 2, 3, etc., we get C2, C4, C6, etc. So we can write that as C2M equals... So, I am writing here C2M equals. Now, we will generalize. Now, if you see, when we have C2, we have negative 1 power 1. When we have C4, we have negative 1 power 2. When we have C6, we have negative 1 power 3. So, it uh, if this is C2M, so this will be 2M by 2. So, that is M. So, we will have this as negative 1 power m divided by in the denominator how do we have we have 2 square 4 squared x 6 square so if you see here the uh, when we have c2 it ends up with 2 square c4 ends up with 4 square c6 ends up with 6 square and so c2m will end up with 2m square and so we will have 2 squared multiplied with 4 squared multiplied with 6 squared etc it goes on up to 2m the whole square now we shall simplify this further so this can be written as negative n 1 power m divided by now 2 can be written as 2 multiplied with 1 the whole square 4 can be written as 2 multiplied with 2 the whole squared 6 can be written as 2 multiplied with 3 the whole squared which is equal and uh, goes on up to 2 multiplied with m the whole square so now what I wanted to do is I wanted to take this 2 squared two, two, uh, 2 squared which goes up to m times common out and so I will be having it as so in the numerator it is negative 1 power m divided by so 2 to the power I have it m times so 2m so I, I can take this common and the remaining term will be 1 uh, squared multiplied with 2 squared multiplied with 3 squared etc up to 
m squared and so that will be equal to negative 1 power m divided by 2 to the power 2 m and this can be written as 1 multiplied with 2 multiplied with 3 etc up to m the whole square and so that is equal to negative 1 power m divided by 2 to the power 2 m and this is m factorial so m factorial the whole square so we can write it in this form so therefore c2m is equal to this where the value of m varies from 1 2 etc up to infinity so thus sigma 1 contains only even powers of x now the c2m we have to take and substitute in sigma 1 of x so here we can take k is equal to 2m because only we have the even powers even powers we can denote as 2m so when we take k equal to 2m this will be equal to summation 2m equal to 0 to infinity which also implies that m is equal to 0 to infinity now here we will have c2m x to the power 2m so that will be equal to so finally the sigma 1 of x is equal to m equal to 0 to infinity c2m is what just now we have obtained here so negative 1 power m divided by 2 to the power 2m factorial m the whole squared multiplied with x to the power 2m so this is our solution sigma 1 of x which is also phi 1 of x so phi 1 of x equal to sigma 1 of x equal to this is our first solution so this is this is also known as Bessel equation of the first kind so thus the function defined by this series is called the Bessel function of zero order of the first kind so uh, it is generally written as and, uh, and it is denoted by j naught of x equal to summation m equal to 0 to infinity negative 1 power m and this is uh, m factorial the whole squared and we'll com I'm combining and writing these two terms x by 2 the whole power 2m. So this is the Bessel uh, function of zero order of the first kind. So also it can be easily uh, checked that the uh, this series is a convergent series. So it may appear in one mark questions also the Bessel equation that is uh, the Bessel function j naught of x converges actually okay so hope you have understood this now we have found only one solution phi 1 of x we are yet to find the second solution phi 2 of x which i will be uh, uh, making as another video so the following video will be the second solution phi 2 of x but when this question uh, is asked we have to write both the solutions together we have to find phi 1 of x as well as phi 2 of x and we have to put it together and we have to write so kindly follow the next video to know the second solution Hope you have understood uh, this lecture. Thank you.